video I'm going to re-thread an electrical back box. This job can be done very quickly and in most cases you don't even need to remove the switch or the socket. However, it is important that you isolate the electric and it's also a good idea to have a look behind the switch or the socket before you attempt this, just in case there is a wire behind where the screw is. In this example I need to remove the switch because I'm fitting a new one and this is at the top of a set of stairs. I'm now at the consumer unit. I'm going to find the circuit breaker for the upstairs lights. I'm going to switch that off and then I'm going to fit the lock off device. And I'm just going to lock that off. Before we touch any of the terminals we do need to ensure that they are dead. The best way of testing these is by using a GS38 approved voltage tester. I'll give you a demonstration of that on another light switch. Before we touch any of the wires at the back, we do need to ensure that they are completely dead. We're going to do that using this GS38 approved voltage tester. This one actually has a self test function, so we're going to press the auto test. You can see that that is working. We're then going to check that the leads are working by measuring the resistance. So I'm going to touch both of the probes together and then press the Holmes button. So you can see that the leads are working. We'll now just check it's working again. So I'm going to probe between the top and the bottom terminal and the machine is not illuminating at all, which proves that it is isolated correctly. On some back boxes you do have a earthing terminal. If you do have an earthing terminal you can put that on the earthing terminal and then you can probe the two terminals to ensure that it is completely dead. We're now just going to check that the tester is still working by pressing the auto test button. And then I'm just going to press the Holmes button and touch the probes together. And that shows us that the leads are still working. So it is now safe to continue. You can see that I can't actually screw the screw into the right hand lug, but I can actually screw it into the left hand lug. That means that the right hand lug is damaged and needs retapping. When it comes to retapping the hull, you can either use a tap wrench and an M3.5 tap if you're in the UK, or you can buy a dedicated tool like this one, which is specifically made for re-threading socket back boxes. Once you've removed the switch, it really is very easy. All you need to do is take the back box threading tool or the tap, push that directly into the hull, ensuring that it is straight and turn it in a clockwise direction. That will then cut a new thread. And it's important when you screw this in that you don't go all the way to the back. You don't actually want to touch the back of the back box. So I'm now going to unscrew that in an anti-clockwise direction. Once you have removed the screw like this, it's important that you don't try and use it again in case it strips the lug again. So it's always a good idea to get a brand new screw. In the UK, screws for sockets and switches are always M3.5. So now it's simply a case of rewiring up the light switch, putting the wires back in the terminals where they came from. We'll then push the switch back into position and replace both screws. Now we've done the work, we can unlock the padlock. Can then remove the lock off device. And then we can switch the circuit back on. If you remove the face plate and you realize that you've got a dry lining back box in there, you can actually replace the tabs on some of these. To do that, you need to push them back. The difficult 
point about this is actually finding the make of it and there are a couple of manufacturers of these but sometimes it is cheaper just to buy a new back box and swap over the tabs providing they will fit. There are a couple of different makes like I've said and some of them are completely different to others. This one for example is an Appleby and you can actually get these out and if you pull it down on an angle like so you can actually remove it. There are some tiny tabs on the back of there which make it difficult to remove. Sometimes you'll find that the screw won't actually undo or tighten up because either the screw is stripped or the lug behind. To fix that you need to grab hold of the switch at the top and the bottom and actually pull on it with your finger and thumb whilst undoing the screw and in most cases that will actually undo the screw. If you can't do that sometimes you may have to get something behind there and add a little bit of extra leverage but you do have to be careful not to snap the switch. It's also critical that when you do this the electricity is isolated. I hope you found this video useful. If you have and you haven't done so already please subscribe to the channel.